What's going on, y'all? Your boy Derek Gray here back again for another video, and this time I'm here with my review for Rebel Moon Part 2 The Sky Giver. <laughs> oh, God. I just got done watching this movie. I literally just got done watching this movie. And um, I watched this movie, you know, while having a, a libation, you know. Just kind of ease me through, just like I did with the first one. Just kind of ease me through, because, you know, when it comes to Zack Snyder movies, you know, we don't typically agree. And that first movie, you can watch my, my, uh, my, <laughs> my review of the first movies up on my channel. I'll put at the end of the video and all that good stuff. Uh, but I just want to, you know, first off, first off. If you are expecting some type of super professional, you know, Chris Stuckman, uh, Jeremy Johns type review here, like a true professional critic, you're not getting that. You're just not. What you're going to get is the ramblings of a man who's had himself a couple drinks watching this stupid movie. <laughs> I just want to give thanks. Your shout outs to Mike's... Uh, Oh, this is the harder mango. This is, it's harder. It's not. It's not the hard. This is the harder. I'm not sponsored by them, but you know, I I should be because they've they've been getting me through some bad movies like this one. Uh, yeah. So this is gonna be some ramblings, man. I'm trying to collect my thoughts while also still drinking a little bit that we got here. Woo! Okay. So where do we begin? This movie, obviously, the sequel to the first movie, uh, first Rebel Moon, where you know they set up the whole going out and getting these different people. You know, it's the classic Seven Samurai story. You know, these people, this village, this planet, whatever. You know, they are the underdogs. They are the ones under the thumb of an oppressive empire. What's it called the Imperium in this? Yeah, Imperium, like Gunter from you WWE. Know, <laughs> um. They're under their thumb, they're coming to, like, take their grains and stuff, and their harvest and all that stuff, and, you know, the first movie was about them, it was about Korra, the main character played by Sophia Patella, going out to get these different warriors and people across the galaxy, uh, to bring them back in hopes to help fight off the Imperium, right, and this movie is that, this movie is the actual Seven Samurai, training the people in how to fight and then fighting off the Imperium when they come to attack. That's what this movie is. Uh, it's kind of like... Could you say it's the Empire Strikes Back? No, not... It was kind of heading that way, but like they won in the end. Spoilers, by the way. Uh, There's going to be some mild spoilers, maybe. Because, again, you know, I'm kind of going off the cuff here. Uh, but... Here's the thing. When it comes to the first movie, I... I came out saying that there was a really interesting idea there, really good, you know, intriguing idea that I could have gotten on board with, right? Because, like, this, this obviously, Zack Snyder pitched this movie to uh, Lucasfilm, to Disney, right, as a Star Wars film. They said, no, we're not doing that. And he said, fine, I'll go to Netflix and I'll make my own shit, you know? And I, despite not being a Zack Snyder fan, you know, like, some of his movies I like, you know, I like Watchmen a lot, uh, but, you know, like his DC movies, you know, Man of Steel, mm -mm. BVS, mm -mm. the Snyder Cut, oh god, I want to give, you know, this new IP, this new sci-fi IP of his a chance, because, you know, in the world of entertainment, film, media, Hollywood, all that stuff, a lot of it is just beating the dead horse that is established IP and sucking them dry for all that they can get. So it's always nice to have, you know, some new original stuff going on here. It's some new original IP and obviously Zach wanted this to be this huge thing and wanted it to be like he wanted to go off into like books and like shows and I think even a game or something, I don't know. But at the end of the day what he what he put out here, especially in part two, like part one I didn't really enjoy, but I was like, okay, you got me, hopefully part two can actually be something, and part two was just absolutely nothing, dude, like, 
the main problem I had with the first movie was that, you know, I, they didn't get me to care about any of the characters in there. Like, the one I cared about the most was the main character, Cora, Sophia Patella, right? And I was hoping that would change come the second movie. But it did not. Like, I, I, I can exclusively report to you that did not change. I did not give a single flying fuck about any of these characters in this movie man like someone i'm not gonna say who i'm not gonna say who a character one of one of the main characters that they you know that they gather one of them dies actually no two of them dies yeah two of them die two 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 main characters die and when i tell you i could not care less that's what this movie failed to do. It made it made it if it it, 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 it made it, 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 it <laughs> failed to make me care on so many levels. Like, hold on. <sighs> Zack Snyder is known for his action, right? Like, despite how much I hate BVS, the Batman warehouse scene. Still, to this day, untouched when it comes to, like, Batman action in movies, right? Like, untouched. That that scene, I could, I would, every now and then, I, I'll just go on YouTube, type up the Batman warehouse scene, watch that shit, because it's so good, right? Zack Snyder is known for his action. But this movie, which is more, much more action-based, you know, like, got a lot, of, a lot more action, because it's about the... The actual war that they were setting us up with. Setting us up for last movie. The action is just so like. Uninspired. And once again. Just hampered by slow-mo. Slow-mo everywhere. Like. I was live tweeting my thoughts. On uh. On Twitter. Link in description. But by the way. You go follow me over there. I was live tweeting my thoughts. As I was watching the movie. And. And. And one of the things that I, I I tweeted out was just like, I think the more we complain about slow-mo in Zack Snyder movies, the more he puts slow-mo in his movies. Like, imagine if the Batman warehouse scene was just hampered down by so much slow-mo. Like, that, I don't think that scene has any slow-mo in it. I think about it. The warehouse scene is just, nah, it's just full Arkham Batman going back and forth, taking out people. I don't think there's any slow-mo in that. But you get to this movie, just like in the last movie, every freaking fight scene is some slow mo, man. Everywhere. There was even I, I, I tweeted out there was even a point where like they're you know harvesting crops or whatever. You even got slow mo that shit. What the fuck? <laughs> oh man. The action, you know, the one point the one thing that I thought Zach could do you know, better than anything, couldn't capture me, the characters didn't care, they literally have a moment where all the characters are sitting at a round table, and they go around telling them, telling each other their origin, and we get to see their origins, or like important parts of their origins, and I, I was just like, holy shit, I cannot believe what I'm watching right now, instead of giving, is, 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 is this why he has... You know what? Well, I think both this one and the last and the last one are gonna have like three hour, you know, director's cuts. Is, is that why? We're actually gonna see their origins in that. I don't want to watch the. Here's the thing, nothing in either of these movies made me want to watch a director's cut. Matter of fact, at the end of this movie, at the end of this movie, I don't know if there's supposed to be a third one or not. I don't care. I think I'm done. I think I'm done. Okay. I don't care he makes this freaking rated R three hour, four hour, five hour spectacular director's cut. I don't care. I'm done. The world doesn't interest me. The characters doesn't interest me. Alright? It is just so it's just a whole lot of nothing. It's a whole lot of nothing. Like they they try to do emotional moments in here. Like I literally just laughed out loud and sure it could be because of the alcohol, but you have moments where these characters are trying to be emotionally attached to each other, try to like have these emotional dramatic moments. And I'm just sitting back. I'm just like, none of this is earned. 
none of it. I don't care. You know, like, a character dies, and someone's just like, oh, I love you, please don't go, don't go. I'm just sitting back, I'm sitting back, just like, get the fuck out of here. I'm just like, just stop, <laughs> just stop it, just stop. Oh, man, this movie is, this movie is, it's, it's, it's not written well. Uh, the villain, not intimidating or imposing at all. Francis from Deadpool, that's, that's, that's what the villain was, same as the last movie. They do the whole thing, you know, where he comes back and you think he's going to be more menacing and, and whatnot. But like most of the movie, he's just sitting next to another dude, you know, barking orders. Like he's not doing anything. And But you know who does get to do something? At the very end of the movie, though. The robot, Anthony Hopkins, he finally, he, he, has, a, he, ha, he has the best moment of the entire movie, I think. When the robot shows up and finally does shit. But like everything else is just nah, nah. I mean, like I, I can't I can't fault the actors. You know, the actors did the, did the job. You know, uh, Daimon Hansu, that his name is. He's the he's the only other character aside from uh, Korra, the main character. His name was Titus. He's the only other character whose name I remember, and I only remember his name is Titus because I just got done watching you know Fallout, you know about a day ago. Like I I watched the last episode of Fallout. I've been watching Fallout for like the last week. You know, obviously, the main one of the main characters' name is Titus, so that's just how I was able to remember his name. Everybody else, I don't, don't remember their names. Don't remember where they're from. I don't know if they even told us where they were from. None of that shit. This movie's not good. This movie's trash. Um, you know, again, if there's a third movie, I don't care. I'm not watching it. I, I'm done. Uh, Zack Snyder is, uh, you know, I. I I try to be nice, you know. If you're a fan of Zack Snyder and you and you like this movie, you like the other one, you know the the other movie. Uh, good for you. Uh, I did get no such. I got no such enjoyment. Uh, Zack Snyder. I just this was his chance to kind of prove that you know after all the DC stuff that he's you know he's actually really good at what he does. I don't think he is. Um, that's just my opinion, though. But anyway, I'm done talking about this movie. I'm done talking about this franchise. <laughs> franchise. This shit ain't a franchise. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below. Have you seen Rebel Moon Part 2? Did you like it? Did you not? What you think of the first one? Let me know all that stuff in the comments down below. If you are new here and you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Alright, I'm on the road to 6. I know subscribers, man. I can't get there without you, all right? And if you are subscribed and you're, you know, you're one of the newbies coming in, you just recently subscribed, hey, man. Check out a bunch of my other, you know, content that I have. You check out the playlist. I do try the laughs. I do uh, different reactions, different gaming series, uh, all of that good stuff, man. Remember to like the video, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, and fuck this movie, man. <laughs>